guest is a familiar face from the screen and on stage. He's a singer, dancer, actor, and recently turned author. It's Rob Mills. It's Rob Mills. Rob Millsy Mills. Would you please welcome to the desk, Rob Mills! Great to be here. Great to have you here. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. We're big fans. We've been trying to get you on for a while. We've got a great excuse to get you on because yes. Rob Mills, ladies and gentlemen, has a book out. <laughs> it's called Putting on a Show. Yep. What's it about? Some people said it's a memoir. It's not a memoir. It's more along the lines of Lee Sales Any Ordinary Day. Except it's, it's Lee Sales' memoir. You've yeah, exactly. Lee Sales' <laughs> memoir. But instead of like going down the path of traumatic stuff, I talk about my own traumatic stuff. No, I talk about, um, I'm trying to find out all the things that it is to be an Aussie man. So I, I realised like over time, like the 70s, 80s, we had these archetypes of Aussie blokes. There's the beach blonde surfer bloke. There's the Jackie Howell sheep sharing bloke. Yeah. We don't, you and I don't Stop quite. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Quite that, we're not quite that bloke, so I want to find out who he is. You don't know me, Millsy, all right? <laughs> a bit of respect. But that's right, that's right. The Aussie male has changed over time. Yeah. And I wanted to see what that looked like now. And with the help of uh, incredible uh, people like Dr. Pat McGorry, Professor Jane Perkis, Tommy Harkin, Kirk Docker, who started You Can't Ask That, uh, Tyson Younger Porter, uh, Rowdy Walden. Probably like, don't have time for the so, so, <laughs> There's lots, lots of great people I interviewed. Right. You so, can actually yeah. put that in the book. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> You posted this when the book was printed and arrived. Mm. Oh, now. <laughs> oi, oi. It's a fucking <laughs> There it is. I thought it was my sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that why, that's why you had the helmet on? <laughs> 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 so, okay, best. something jumped out. <laughs> I really wasn't sure what was going to be in the box, but, yeah, that, I was very excited, and I obviously hadn't taken off my helmet from the scooter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, The Mask Reader is coming soon. It's going to be a great, <laughs> great series. So it's, a, it's about your manhood. What did you learn? <laughs> I learned that... I think that's the name of one of the sex toys you ordered. Oh, really? Well. Right. <laughs> I learned that uh, blokes are not very good at self-reflecting. Uh, I learned that blokes are also not very good at... They don't want to burden the other person, whether it's their partner, their mates, and that's oh, not... Oh, stop you there. You, you're burdening you're me. Burdening. <laughs> I'll stop you there. I've, I've also learned that uh, we... We need a place. Blokes need the space to go and uh, to banter with their mates, but they also need to go and have that, have that space to also have real conversations. And we don't, we're not doing the real conversations. We're doing far too much banter. Just to need a little bit more real chat. Uh, from from you know from what you've researched, yeah, yeah. who do you think epitomises the modern? Aussie male. You know, I actually interviewed some uh, Aussie Melbourne firefighters one day, just walking along the street, just bumped into them and started having a chat. They have they were this... on their way to an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, guys, guys, do you mind? What is, what is, what is, what is, what is it about what is what is <laughs> Tell me about masculinity. Have you got time? Yeah. And they said, where's the manhole? We need to go down. <laughs> No, they were fantastic. The, the way they have a peer-to-peer -peer program, the way they talk to each other, the way they banter, the way they talk about um, everything. They're incredible uh, examples of the modern Aussie bloke. Well, it's like blokes aren't good at talking about this sort of stuff. Yeah, so to get it to get it all down from someone that we love in a book like that, it, it is a great thing to do. I'm trying to get blokes to open up to be more vulnerable. We we see that uh, being vulnerable is a sign of weakness. I just want to show if I could be open and honest uh, with the book, maybe more blokes will do it in real life as well. I could start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I just I share everything from sexuality stuff, uh, masculinity stuff, uh, penis sizes in there. I talk about male pattern baldness. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a pop up. <laughs> <laughs> we needed the fold out. We needed the fold out. Mine's coming out in a novella. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit smaller. <laughs> But there's, there's so much in there and there's so much in your back catalogue that we want to talk about. We don't have time to cover it all, but yep. one of the big things that we know and love you from is Wicked. Yes. Wicked the musical, and we saw a photo of you with Lucy Durack during the week. Oh, because yes. Wicked's coming back, are you reprising your role in Wicked? I would say absolutely not. I'm 40 years of age now, way too old, and I cannot dance that uh, Dancing Through Life ever again. But the show is coming back and I'm so excited. It is... Look, it's without Wicked, there is no Frozen. Without Frozen, there's generations of kids growing up thinking that there still needs to be a prince to save the day. So yes. I think it's this is one of the best shows of all time. So, yeah, I'm glad it's coming back, but no, I won't be in it. Did you learn how to be humble in the book? Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there, it's all in there, yeah. You're about to wrap up a stint in a musical at the moment. You're in Hairspray playing Corny Collins. What's that been like? The show's been great. I mean, 
couple of years of lockdowns and no stage shows at all across the country. So I'm just wrapped to be a part of a big show again. Uh, Shane Jacobson, Todd McKinney and, uh, of course, Rhonda Birchmore. It's been an absolute hoot uh, being part of the show. Ted, what did you think of the musical? Did you love it? (laughs) You can't stop the beat? Can I just reveal something? I don't think... think, Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Bell's book (laughs) is out now. I don't think we have to... We don't need to move on. Tom is a very busy man and he's been really nervous because he did say, I can't wait to see it, but because he's been so busy, he hasn't got to see it yet. So so a while ago, you sent me a message saying, hey, Tim, loving the cheap seats, you guys are doing great work. And I sent back to you, good luck for Hairspray, can't wait to see it. And you said, are you coming opening night? And you said... Nothing for seven months. <laughs> it's been, I've been left on red. It's devastating to be left on red. Yeah. And is, was that upsetting for you, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to talk about it? <laughs> Do you want to hug it out? No, it's OK. It's OK. There's a few more shows this week. I'll get you along. Yeah. I am a bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I am trying to check it out. You are amazing at it, I'm told. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And an announcement has just been made on your replacement. Who's taking over from you? My good mate Bobby Fox is taking over uh, the role of Courtney Collins. I Can't unfortunately wait to see him. <laughs> in Adelaide and in Sydney, uh, Bobby will be taking over. So it's going to be yeah. He's very good. He's fantastic. Speaking of shows that you're involved in, one of the big ones this year, Neighbours, yeah. came to an end, and a lot of people may remember you from Neighbours. You had a, you had a key role in Neighbours. You were, you were Finn Taylor? Yeah, uh, Finn Kelly, but it's close. Yeah, good. Just another, just another one that you... Obviously, just another one you've watched at me. Thank you. It's good. I filmed the love tonight, guys. You feel the love? Yeah. So Finn... Um, Finn Kelly was yeah. the character that, you, that we all know and love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but your your final scene ever on Neighbours, it goes down in the show's history. We've got a little bit of Finn Kelly's final moments. Oh, look out, look out. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh no. Wow. What's that? <laughs> what happened to Finn there? So Finn was digging a, a grave for Susan Kennedy. I'd kidnapped her and also a baby at the time. Um, wow. I, I was, really... it, was this based on a real-life experience? Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> but anyway, that's me falling in the, the grave and actually drowning myself. So I, And then, luckily for me, because it's a soap, you can come back as a ghost. So I came oh, back. Which, you did in the last episode? Yeah, I came back, yeah. What was it like being in the last ever episode of Neighbours? What an emotional finale to a much-loved show. Yeah, it was, it was actually, to, to be honest, it was really beautiful to be on set with all the crew. Like, and I'm talking about crew and cast that have been a part of the show for the last 37 years. To be back on the street in Ramsey Street yeah. or Pinot Court in Vermont. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and for those who didn't see it, what was it like? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really... It's, it's, <laughs> it's a really beautiful moment. A lot of tears, a lot of tears were shed. They were real tears. They were real tears as well. Yeah. Real tears, that's right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> of course, speaking of shows, we are going to see you coming up at the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Oh. You're a big part of... That's right. Yep. I'm there ready. we go. I'm ready. I'm ready he's, re- he's race ready. I'm ready. I'm ready now. He's race ready. Yeah. You're part of Ten's coverage for the races. What does that involve? I will be roaming around the birdcage with my partner Georgie Tunney, uh, with Who is a Thompson. serious, a serious news journalist. journalist. They and should be breaking some big exclusives, yeah, and you will be uh, doing the fashion stuff. <laughs> the fashions on the f- I'm doing the fashions on the field chat, uh, which Correct. is always fun. I've done it the last uh, three years now, so it is always a fun time out there. And this is actually the first time that we'll have crowds at. Flemington racetrack in the first in the last three years, which is incredible. Amazing. Well, Rob's new book, Putting on a Show, is out now, ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute treat! Would you please thank Rob Mills? <laughs>